Oh, look at that. A successful reservation was completed. For me? Hey guys, how's it going? So I signed the papers. I'm officially in the Army Reserve. I will be sworn in as an Army, active in the Army on April 2nd. So I'm excited about that. I'm gonna talk more about that um, as a joint video with my brother-in-law Gavin Duffy next week. For now, I wanted to focus on the D-Lab because I took the D-Lab and the D-Lab was quite difficult. And while I can't talk about the specifics of the test, you know, what each question said, I'm gonna to try to talk about some things to help you on the D-Lab. Though quite frankly, I'm not sure how you would study for this test. But let me see if I can talk a little bit about it and see if I can help you to understand what the test will be about and how you can prepare for it. So the D-Lab stands for the Defense Language Aptitude Battery. And essentially what that means is how good are you at learning languages? It's not a test to know what you already know. It's not a test, I mean, unless you happen to know Esperanto, you really won't know how to speak or write the language that you're going to be tested on. And so it's really just how quickly can you learn this made up language. The jobs that require this test are jobs where you have to speak a foreign language and you know learn a foreign language. So that's what they're testing you on. I honestly didn't study for this test. I had heard you can't study for it. And I wasn't really worried about it. I was intrigued to see how it would go. So I didn't study for it. I've noticed there are study guides online. Um, I've heard mixed things about study guides though. Um, a couple of guys that were with me at MEPS had bought study guides for their SIFT test, which I think is the helicopter pilot test. And they said that they studied their study guides that they bought and only one of the questions actually they felt like was helped from their study guide. And so the other 119 questions they didn't get from their study guide. So I'm not sure how much a study guide will be helpful. Honestly, I mean, you can try a study guide, but if you're good at learning languages, then you're gonna do well. If you're not, you're not. You know, it's kind of just what the test is about. It's trying to find people who can learn languages quickly. I would practice grammar. So the test will test you on things like, um, you know, what stress is the syllable on for a word? Uh, for instance, today, the stress is on the A, right? Today, not today, it's today. You know, if you've learned another language, you've probably already learned this and you know what that is and you're familiar with that. Um, but if not, I would brush up on that. And then just basic grammar, because um, even if all you know is English and you, you, know, you don't remember your grammar from elementary school or middle school, a lot of the tests is gonna be rules they've made up about this language. And so you have to know what parts of grammar are in order to properly learn the rules they give you and use on the test. So you know what a noun is, what an adjective is, what a verb is, just all the parts of, of language because they're gonna give you this made up language with made up rules and you're gonna have to translate. So I would definitely practice up on various parts of language in whichever language or languages you know. There were three sections. The first section was sort of a um, I guess grammar rules, like it wasn't just it was more of a survey I felt like, it even said, you know, survey on it, but what do you know about grammar? The second section is where they really started talking about the rules of this language they made up and where you actually started translating. And so they, they give you a rule and then you start answering those questions and translating, they give you another rule and they give you another rule and then they give you all the rules and you were translating and it was timed. But on this test, I couldn't, I could barely finish it once. It was just really quick. And so they're really trying to test how quickly can you learn a language. I actually kind of like that about this test. And then the last section was a weird one. It was like pictures. And so they give you a picture and they give you what it was. And then they give you another picture that was similar and try to get you to translate it based on the pictures. Again, if you have, if you want to take a practice D lab, you'll know what I'm talking about, but it, yeah, I mean, you just have to give it your best shot and be like, well, if this is called this and this is called this, then that third thing is probably called this. Um, you know, just translating this language that's totally made up and doesn't make sense. 
the D-Lab itself is out of 176. So perfect score would be 176. In order to pass for the army, I had to get a 90. So that's, you know, 51%, uh, which tells you how hard the test is. I ended up getting a 127, which is only 72%. So, I mean, I, I got a C minus, right? But that was enough to pass this test. But uh, yeah, the, it was a hard test. Um, I would definitely try it, you know, give it a shot. Why not? You know, you might be good at languages. Who knows? My recruiter said that these jobs are always open because no one can pass that stupid test. And so, you know, it is a good job path if, you, if you're interested in language. I would just take the test, see what happens. You don't, you don't lose anything doing it. As I recall, the, the Air Force said that if I took the test, they could reserve the job for me. That was about the only way to reserve a job in the Air Force before going to boot camp. Same thing with the Navy. Um, in the Army's case, you can just reserve a job, so I didn't have to do that. But I wanted to, the job I wanted, you know, you had to take the D-Lab. So that's why I took it and I passed it. So I was really happy about that. Now I can um, go off to boot camp and, and uh, then go off to language school. And I'll probably talk about my job later because frankly, I don't know a lot about my job yet. I'm still at home. I'm not in basic training. I'm definitely not in language school in Monterey. But uh, all I know is since I passed that test, I go to basic training, which in my case will be in Oklahoma, at Fort Sill. And then after that, my wife and I are going to go to Monterey, where I'll be learning a language, which will be assigned to me after I get there. And I'll be learning that language for a year. And assuming that I learn the language um, correctly and successfully pass the course, I will then do my job as a crypto, ling crypto linguist. That's the word. And uh, secretly hoping I get Korean. I'm not sure why, I just kind of want to learn Korean. Um, I think they also really want Russian and Chinese, and uh, I think they said Farsi right now. Wherever we end up, it should be an adventure. So, me and my wife and I are excited about that. Also excited about living in Monterey for a year. You know, it's always nice to get paid to live on the beach. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the deal I have in a nutshell. Make sure you subscribe, because next week I'm going to post a video about MEPS. I already have one about MEPS, but I went to MEPS again for the D-Lab and then to finish. So I have the second half of MEPS to talk about. My brother-in-law Gavin is also gonna talk about MEPS cause he's going to MEPS pretty soon. And hopefully everything's good to go for him. So yeah, make sure you subscribe and look out for that video. And thanks for watching and hope you have a great rest of the day or night or whatever time it is wherever you're watching.